Hello, everybody, and welcome to Adobe Live. My name is Flynn. I'm here with the fantastic Bill Hope, and we would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land in which we are creating and streaming from today and pay our respects to elders past, present, and emerging. We're here for our second half of our, um, you know, learning to draw kind of series. Um, it's always fun with Bill Hope. We had a great time on Tuesday. If you missed it, check it out. If you're watching this on replay, go check that out. I'm sure you can find a link uh, somewhere on YouTube to check it out. Um, first of all, Bill, how's it going? Doing really well. How are you, Flynn? I'm really good, thanks. I, I neglected to comment on like your your the space behind you last time. Like this is like such an illustrator created creator space. This is like Thank pictura you. picturesque of what I would expect. Um, like someone such as yourself to have. Like it's a, it looks like a really nice space to create in. Thank you very much. Yeah, well, I, I appreciate the comment. I've recently sort of done a little adjustment around yeah. the studio. So I've got a couple of old prints over here and I've got this beautiful new bookshelf that my friend who's a carpenter made for me, which has definitely given a sort of funky air to the place. So um, yeah, yeah and that's it. It's a nice place to work in. It looks super, super cool. Um, and checking in with you, chat, what is going on? Um, got Johanna looking after us today. Uh, Manny from Philly, what is up? Uh, Misty's here as well. Hi, Misty, great to see you. Um, so if you're watching over on YouTube or over on Behance, doesn't matter, drop in a comment if you've got some questions while we're rolling along. Um, we're here for a short time and a good time. Um, Bill, should we do a bit of a recap on what we did on Tuesday for those who may have missed it? Yeah, absolutely. So um, on Tuesday, we were kind of just doing a general introduction to sort of free sketching in Photoshop. So sort of really loosening up and um, trying to find ways to draw digitally um, in a way that's as sort of relaxed and free as you would just sketching on a, on a pad of paper. Um, and we were going through that um, by sort of combining animals together. So we were, we were looking at a bit of reference and we were taking two animals and sort of squishing them together to see what we came out with. And that was kind of just a vehicle to talk about all things sketching in Photoshop. Um, so yeah, we're gonna continue that a little bit today. Um, today, I think I'll focus a little bit more on sort of the, the, the process of sketching rather than uh, the technical details, but definitely go back and check the video on Tuesday um, uh, to get any of those kind of tips and tricks that we dropped in there as well. Yeah, some great stuff along there. And if you have any questions while we're rolling along, don't hesitate to throw them out, whether it's on topic, off topic or whatever. Um, and we also had like a really fun drawing prompt um, and it was Crab Llama. Um, and I think we had some great suggestions from Tuesday that Bill's taken a look at. I don't know what, I don't know what's going to happen today. Like who knows? I'm very excited. <laughs> um, I love it yeah. when I don't know what is going to happen. Um, and Bill's been checking those out uh, to uh, entertain us today. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, no, it was a really fun stream on Tuesday. And um, yeah, so the crab llama combo was a very interesting <laughs> one. I'll, I'll show you those drawings we did in a, in a sec. Um, and then we had a bunch of great suggestions um, from Joanna and people in the chat. Um, and I've gone through those suggestions and I've chosen one I'd like to focus on today, but um, definitely throw out any more suggestions because hopefully we'll have a bit of time at the end and I can sort of smash through a couple couple more and, and come up with some crazy creatures. But um, definitely drop any questions about just sort of general sketching, any of the technology or programs that I'm using, um, anything about illustration you like, drop it in the chat and I will try and help you out as, as we go, go along. Um, so yeah, keeping it sort of free and easy today. Um, Yes. Um, uh, can everyone see my screen? Can we switch over to Photoshop? Yep, they can now. Awesome. Crab okay. and llama. Brilliant. Crab and llama. So um, we had this kind of combo uh, that we were, we were working on. And um, uh, we started off with sort of this uh, loose, loose kind of llama sketch that you can see really faint there. And over the top of that, we layered uh, this crazy uh, crustacean uh, sort of armor over a whole llama. And this is where we ended up with crab llama and then towards the end of the stream we decided we'd sort of switch it up and uh we changed it over to llama crab which i have to say is is maybe my favorite of the two this fluffy little uh um llama crab with, with beautiful long eyelashes yeah the eyelashes uh, really add a lot to it and the um the reflection in the eyes i think it's very cute. It's yeah. very cute, this one. So um, uh, last stream, we were using um, a program called Pure Ref, um, which is a very easy thing to get online. And um, I really like this as a, as a way to kind of keep um, reference for what I'm working on up on screen the whole time while I'm sketching. So I will do a big reveal of our, our, our animal combo for today. Went through the list, there was sort of like a pig fish, a unicorn dragon, all sorts of crazy stuff. But 
The one that for some reason resonated with me um, was uh, the combination of a lady beetle and an elephant. Something about these two, one's cool. tiny, one's huge. They're similar kind of shapes. I don't know, there's some kind of uh, synchronicity there that I'm keen to explore. So I've Lovely. just got my little uh, Pure Ref um, uh, panel here that I've dropped a couple photos in and we're gonna start looking at all sorts of things inside these photos to try and get some good detail to, to, to work up work up this character. And I'll sort of talk through my process uh, along the way as, as we're sketching. So usually I start completely from scratch, but full disclosure, I did spend a, a minute or two sketching um, before the stream. Um, and I ended up with something very, very loose that I'm gonna put up on screen here. And I'm gonna shrink that down and just stick it in the corner as a little reference for me, because I'd like to look at that later. So I'm gonna try and find some way to get these, um, uh, the, the lady beetle and uh, the elephant to work together. So I've just got a nice fresh layer in Photoshop. I'm getting my B for brush tool out and I'm using this nice um, sort of chalky pencil brush here. And we were saying last stream, I like to use something that's a bit sort of uh, looser and not not too accurate because it, it feels like I can kind of rough out the details a little bit more and I'm not getting stuck into details too early. I'm just kind of going for those big, big general shapes. So the, the basis of this character is kind of going to be um, this elephant. So I'm going to get up this reference here and I'm going to start sort of just really roughing out the basic shape of this character and I'm going to be using this reference here. So we're looking at a kind of three-quarter view and I like the way that this elephant here has kind of got the, a big ball at the back of its um, body and you can see that the spine coming up the top there and the head of the elephant's going to be sort of uh, further down here. So not worrying about any detail I'm just sort of getting those big general forms in. Um, for this character. And is that often how you begin like to kind of do kind of fairly basic shapes at the beginning like circles and, and things like that? Yeah, absolutely. It's it's just a really good way to sort of um, um, you, you sort of want to just be thinking about like what's the general pose of this this um, animal first. You could start sort of just sort of knocking in the detail of the, 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 the trunk and the antlers and all that kind of stuff. But um, uh, I'm just trying to give myself a really overview of, um, of uh, what um, this animal is going to look like. Almost any drawing can be broken down into sort of a series of spheres or cylinders. I might be working on a cylinder like this for the legs. Mm. And uh, I'm just kind of, it's almost like you're molding something out of clay. You just kind of get the big shapes there first before you start sort of working in the detail. Mm. Um, so when I'm sketching, sometimes uh, I'll get like a basic shape and then I'll start manipulating it quite quickly to, to move it around, this being one of the joys of digital drawing. So I've just used L on my keyboard for the lasso tool. I'm just going to draw around that shape and I'm going to rotate it, shrink it a little bit. I can go to um, a, right, uh, a right click on that and I can distort it. So I'm just going to sort of move it around until I find a shape that, that works for me a bit better. Um, all right. Now, um, uh, elephants traditionally have four legs and uh, lady beetles traditionally have uh, six legs, but it would be cool to see if I can kind of combine those things together. So I'm going to sort of knock in where I think those legs might be. And it's going to be a flying lady beetle elephant that we're working on here. So I'm going to start sort of roughing in where those legs might, might go. Um, and I'm going to have two of the back legs kind of hanging down, almost like you see like a, a bumblebee um, when it's when it's flying along. It's, it's sort of got, uh, it's sort of two two front legs perched up and the others are sort of just, just flailing behind it there. Yeah. <laughs> so just knocking in those big shapes. And, Outrageous. Uh, are there any artists that you're aware of that do this kind of thing, like, you know, professionally, like kind of creating like crazy, like mashup animals? It, Bef I'll, I'll answer that question a little bit. I'm remembering um, uh, Jeff Jeff Chen, who has been on Adobe Live a couple of times before. We did a, we did a session where he um, kind of took elements of something else, like kit bashing, and took elements of something else and kind of created a, um, a kind of mythical figure and stuff like that. He does like a lot of um, conceptual art around like for gaming and things like that. And um, he'll often use nature as a reference. Um, and then you know put it into this kind of mythical kind of thing so i guess going back to my first question do you know of anyone who um who, who does this sort of thing like mashup of animals to create like a surreal kind of thing 
Yeah, I think there's all sorts of people do it. I don't know if anyone that I know of specifically does sort yeah. of just two animals mushing them together. But um, most of the concept artists that I see that I really like um, are doing a, a, a version of this. And um, you see it, I mean, even looking at the, um, like if you're looking at the animals from say like the Avatar movies or, or, or something mm. like that, like there's um, some kind of like horse characters in that movie. And you can see they're, they're a strange combination of like a horse and like a uh, rhinoceros beetle or something like that. Mm. You can see the artist has just sort of taken those two things and worked them together. And we were talking a little bit of, uh, in the first stream about how it's it's a really it's a really good way to work because if you're drawing something alien or new, like there's a certain amount of abstractness that you can kind of get away with, but people need a little a little hook in something they know in reality to make it sort of feel alive to them. Um, and and nature, I mean, looking looking close, the closer you get at these photos of a lady beetle or something, they're quite alien and strange. There's so much good reference there. Um, so it's always a really a really worthwhile thing to do, sort of um, having this this kind of reference on hand. Mm. Yeah, it's really interesting. The point, like you know, wanting to have like a it's good to kind of draw from nature and things that e exist for us like as an audience to kind of understand what's kind of going going on Makes yeah sense. yeah definitely definitely all right so, i also uh, like that of... you've used a colored background a slightly colored background because i did make the comment in tuesday's stream it's like do you always draw with white and you said no um i you said i often do and then i'll add a little bit of color to the background I'm like oh this is heaps better yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's um, uh, I don't know. It gives it just a bit more of a natural feeling, not being sort of glared in the eyeballs by yeah. um, pure white um, the, the whole time as well. So I thought this one would be in flight. So I'm sort of trying to combine. There's, there's obviously I've got the, the sort of trunk-like feet of the uh, of the elephant. Uh, I'm trying to work in sort of the, the big eyes and sort of the mandibles there as well. Um, we might have, uh, instead of tusks, we could have um, some of these kind of antenna uh, coming out the front of the um, the, 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 the elephant. Um, and I like this kind of almost kind of like uh, sort of big, uh, almost like a big cowl or scarf or something that's on, on the back of the, um, the lady beetle. So I'm going to work that into the head of the elephant as well. Um, uh, one thing about elephants, they seem to have amazing cheekbones. Look, look at those look at those defined cheekbones on the mm. elephant there so i want to find a way to kind of work those in as well um so getting a bit lost in the detail here so i'll, I'll sit back and um try and get the, the the big forms in and um we'll start piecing it together if anybody's right. got any questions about sort of um uh any of the processes i'm using or some of the shortcuts that i'm doing quite a lot yeah. of it's in in the, in the first stream but definitely drop them in the chat if there's anything i can i can help with yeah let us know for sure um we do have one from johanna um speaking of clay um would you ever consider making these creatures out of clay i know you've done sculptural work before tell you what i've got a big block of femo clay right here that ready I'm to roll christmas ready to roll and i <laughs> Just have not found the time to do it. So very much so, <laughs> China. I'm, I've got the materials. I've got the uh, um, the the, the um, desire to do it. Um, I just haven't got around to it. So yes, I'd very much like to. And um, uh, I used to go to a slightly sort of highfalutin traditional drawing school called the Julian Ashton School, um, which I've gone on about on the stream before. Um, but many of the people um, doing uh, figure drawing there would need to do um, play sculpting as well because there's such a mix between those two things sort of because uh, when you make it work in the play you're really having to sort of like push your hands into a three-dimensional form of the face and you learn so much about how it's mm. how it's sort of pieced together by doing that oh that's really, okay. that's really cool uh, so anyone who would have uh, seen me drawing on one of these streams before knows I, I like to work sort of in kind of like iterations of detail um, with, with with drawings like this. So um, I've, uh, I've used this sort of big loose brush to, to rough out the, the, the form, but I'm feeling ready to start working some detail. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my layer in Photoshop and at the top of the layers panel is an opacity slider. And I'm gonna drop this way down to about 16%. I'm gonna start a new layer and I'm gonna start sketching on top of my old drawing and try and get uh, a few more interesting details in there. So let's go straight to the good bit and um, find some reference for a lady beetle face and try and get some ideas there. I just noticed that on that <clears throat> in that Pure F app, um, 
like when you're zooming in and like zooming as you're zooming in there's tons and tons of detail there um i guess it's just quite interesting that you've clearly got very high res images in there but it slides in and out like really quick like it clearly retains like every pixel which is yeah yeah cool. no it's very good it's it's not sort of storing them on a like a, a raster image canvas i think it yeah. stores all the information of the photo so you can just sort of keep keep zooming into something like that um so it's really good in that way so i'm coming across one of the uh, struggles um of many um illustrators um with with bugs in that they've got quite sort of dead eyes a lot of the time you want the you don't want them to look like an evil angry bug so right. what i'm going to do is is sort of cheat and put some 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 fake um eyebrows um uh onto this guy and hopefully we can have a slightly more cheerful and less uh creepy creepy elephant lady beetle um as we, as we get to the end here so that must have been a struggle for what what are those movies ants and uh, a bug's life or something when they first started out they're like how do we how do we put expression on an ant yeah yeah definitely and and there is something as well that like um if you look at an eye like this like it's totally black and there's something about not being able to see any whites of someone's eyes that um you can't really because you don't know where they're looking it's very hard to get any sort of life into them mm. so people often do this by just giving them very very big pupils so that's what i'll do now i will um um uh go ahead and um uh, just color in and I, but I'm just going to leave that little sliver of white that you can see on the side uh, and just even that gives you a sense that this isn't a this is a very big pupil it's not a dead-eyed um B um there was that movie B movie that Jerry Seinfeld made ages and ages ago it was quite yeah. an early uh animated movie and um yeah I imagine it would have been quite a big conversation because one of the most iconic features of a B is is having those big um um uh, big sort of what do they call the multi focal eyes or whatever they are oh they have like a particular eyes. name i didn't know that i don't know what it I is i think they've no. got it i think they've got a special name i see um uh but uh obviously that does not make for a very good children's animated character so they just went ahead with sort of standard cartoony yeah. eyes with those ones i'm going to change my design a little bit on the fly and i'm going to try and get those those interesting sort of mandible shapes in there as well that's really cool. Um, putting the mandibles in the place of the of the tusks. <laughs> I like uh, that a lot. Yeah, yeah. It's it's nice that you get those sort of uh, um, sort of similarities coming through. Yeah. Um, and I feel like I've been focusing a little bit too much on the um, lady beetle reference here. So I'm going to make sure this trunk is nice and elephantesque, I suppose. So I'm going to put the little sort of trunk hand at the end. I don't really know how these work, but I don't know. I think my reference is mainly Dumbo and things that they're able to pick up stuff with um, their trunks. Yeah, this um, is like Dumbo it... from the multiverse where to fly yeah, yeah. Um, was genetically bitten by a ladybug. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's great. You know what? Someone's probably going to green light that as a, as a TV show pretty soon, Flynn. I don't know if you saw the ad that just came out for um, She-Hulk Attorney at Law. Um, no. Did you see that? No. So, so, so they're making a She-Hulk TV series, but she's also a lawyer. So it's sort of a law show that happens to have She-Hulk in it, based within the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Oh, I'm and so like, keen on. I'm so keen for that. <laughs> it looks really good, actually. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie, it, it looks really good. Oh, I'm um, watching that as soon as as soon as I can. Um, um, who's playing She-Hulk? I don't know. I didn't recognize the actress. Okay, I gotta check it out. It looked like good casting though. Uh, they 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 looked um, really good, and interesting. Part of the struggle that I'm coming across here with this one is that um, I mean, elephants. One of the uh, characteristic, well, uh, sort of archetypal characteristics is that they um, have sort of the loose, baggy skin, whereas um, um, uh, an insect has an exoskeleton, so it doesn't have any skin, and it's all sort of armored, like we were doing yesterday. Mm. So I'm trying to sort of find a way to combine those those two things together. Um, yeah, so I've, I found this uh, great brush I was uh, talking to Flynn about before he came on stream. And um, it's one that uh, I can use the side of my stylus. So I'm using a Wacom and I've got my Wacom pencil here. And I can use the side of the stylus to get that sort of um, uh, looser shading in. So I'm just going to do a little bit of shading with a nice pencil. And it's a, it's a lovely natural feel to, to this brush. I'm really enjoying it. You know, there's going to be a question in chat. What is this brush? 
Yep, uh, uh, definitely. So it's from the Kyle T. Webster Mega Pack, and it's from the Pencil Pack, and I think it's like number seven or something. Um, so uh, very easy to find on the Adobe website, um, any of those brushes. And um, yeah, if you're into sketching at all on, online, I mean, on, on in Photoshop, it's uh, it's a uh, amazing resource. Really, really good stuff. I think Kyle's doing streams today, actually. He might be the one after me. So um, definitely check him out. Yeah, I was it's funny you should say that. I was just looking it up to check it out. I think he's up next, but it's tomorrow at 1.30 a.m. for us. So uh, right. it's like they, they, they've usually wrapped up before before we stream. Yeah, um, yeah. But of course, you know, if you haven't checked out the Carl T. Webster, like the man himself, um, we talk about him all the time. He has very fun, very entertaining streams, um, of course. Good and times. also, I imagine kind of like a subtle outsized influence on like the entire creative world. I mean, not to go on about it too much, but um, like there would be a huge percentage of sort of artists these days using the tools that he's made. Mm. Like, I wonder if there will be an archetypal look of these sort of 2000 and teens that will be defined by Carl T. Webster brushes a little bit. Yeah, well, I mean, we, we, we call it Carl T. Webster bingo here because just about every artist when, we have illust illust when we're doing illustration uses a Carl T. Webster brush. Yeah, <laughs> it's, quite it's, funny. it's insane. It's yeah. amazing. Um, all right, so I'm, I'm sort of focusing a bit more on that kind of wrinkly skin now that I've got onto these, these uh, elephant, um, um, elephant feet here. And uh, the great thing about using a sort of textured brush like this and, and this kind of thing is I can I can make it really scribbly and sketchy. And because I've kind of got the drawing anchored by that original sketch and I'm, I'm sort of comfortable with the shape that I've got there, I can really keep my line work nice and loose. And I'm sort of just using these these little loose marks to kind of describe the, the form. It's almost like um, if you see like a topographic map that shows the lines that describe uh, a oh, hill yeah. or something mm. like that. I always think of these kind of lines as a, they're, they're really loose kind of sketchy lines, but you kind of imagine that they're, they're, they're similar to those topographic lines that sort of are wrapping around the form and describing it subtly to you. And you can get something that feels a, a bit more sort of three dimensional and filled out. Oh, wow, that's a really great way to think about it. Like a topographical map. I like that. I haven't heard yeah. that before. Um, another thing that I'm going to do here is, um, so I've, we've got six legs here. I've drawn four of them uh, sort of in, in, a, in a nicely feel that way. But you notice this back leg, I've just shaded in. And because it's kind of sitting in the background, I, I'm not going to worry about adding any, any more detail to it. I'm just going to shade it in as sort of like one block tone. Mm. And it's just going to sit nicely in the background. You don't really have to do much. It, it just kind of sits there, but you sort of understand the form of that one. All right. Um, Big question is, I wonder what's underneath the wings of a lady beetle. I didn't get anyone with what it looks like underneath. Anyway, doesn't matter. <laughs> um, sorry, did you have a question or something? Uh, yeah, Misty was asking, do ladybugs bite? I don't know the answer to that. I don't think so. It's a good question. I mean, I've spent plenty of my time sort of letting ladybugs crawl around your hands and things, but I've never been bitten by one. Mm. But it could be one of those things that sort of is such a small bite, you just wouldn't notice. Um, and still checking with chat, someone's making the, um, before we were talking about kind of mashing up animals, the, um, like, should have been obvious to me, but like Pokemon, like Pokemon's kind of like, oh like my gosh, that, you know, like that's yeah. a great, that's a really, um, great point. Um, not, you know, not the 600th plus Pokemon that they created because clearly they're running out of ideas, <laughs> but you know, like <laughs> Blastoise, you know, you guys know Pokemon. I don't need to explain Pokemon to anyone here, but um, but that's great. Like, you know, that would have been a lot of fun creating those initial characters. Like, what if, you know, there was this water turtle creature who could shoot water out of their back? Like, what would that look like? Um, yeah, yeah. Um, there, there are some where, where, like you were saying, they've run out of ideas that are just like almost inanimate objects. It's yeah. just like kettle azor. It's a kettle. <laughs> yeah. And it boils water. Yeah, They're just I'll... like, obviously, there was a very hungover artist or something that did not show up to work that day yeah, yeah. they just it's it's like friday afternoon they want to get home <laughs> like they're just thinking yeah. about the traffic oh, and they're like 15 right, more Jeez. it's a chandelier cat all right <laughs> shan cat there we go it makes light yeah. that's it um no uh no knocking to the good people at pokemon it's just it will be hard no. once you get to a no, certain no. level and the first yeah. 150 or whatever were pretty Pretty solid. Yeah, yeah, definitely. 
Um, um, so just a question on shading. Sorry, just to jump, just to jump in. Like, do you ever think about, yeah. um, like, like obviously you have to think about kind of where the light is, um, and also like, like what's your approach to shading? Um, something I've seen some artists do, we've seen some artists do here on Adobe Live, um, is kind of even just draw like a light source in the top left corner or something like that to kind of remind them where they think the sun, the the, the light might be coming from, and whether there's a bouncing light. So what, yeah, definitely. you know, do you ever do that? Or what's your approach to kind of thinking about shading? Because I feel like I get halfway through and then I'd zoom out and I'd be like, oh, I've done it all. Like as if there's 20 uh, points of light. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, I think I have a bit of a default that I go to, which is just sort of, yeah, top left hand on the side of the page. Right. You kind of imagine there's a, there's a sun coming in there that's, that's dropping light onto it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I mean, light's kind of confusing in that like, um, um, there's a difference between uh, like direct sunlight and sort of diffused light. So if you imagine it being a bright but cloudy day, there's going to be light coming in from all directions. And I guess that's kind of how I'm doing it here, where there's a general direction of the light, but I'm not drawing really hard shadows. Mm. Um, if I was doing something that was um, uh, like in, in really heavy direct sunlight, I'd, I'd almost be drawing sort of a hard line and like, this is in darkness and that's in light or something like that. Mm. But something like this, I guess I'm just being a little bit lazy. I'm just giving a sort of soft general kind of um, um, shading that, that goes around it. But it's definitely something um, uh, uh, worth thinking about. And, and I'm sort of trying to keep my shading at least consistent in that it's to the right hand side of uh, most of the objects here. So, mm. um, uh, and thinking about some bits like uh, this bottom part of the leg that I'm shading here, that would be sort of tucked away underneath it, so that would be fully out of the light. So little little bits like that, I'm definitely definitely doing. Cool. All right, that's coming along nicely. I think because it's a lady beetle, I'm just going to drop out my original sketch there. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't get the dots in, so I might shade those in and then just add a little bit of color to the whole thing um, to um, uh, make it. Uh, that bit more lady beetle-ish before we, before we move on. So I'll just knock out some big shapes here. Yeah, nice. So do you have that uh, list of uh, additional animals that we could potentially work with? I do. Then? So when we're moving on okay. from the elephetal. Um... Elephetal. <laughs> Very good. I choose you, elephetal. Um, <clears throat> I mean, it's a big list. Um, any that any that jump out to you or you you want to see happen? Uh, <laughs> try not to be selfish here. Um, I'll give you three to choose from. Okay. How about that? Um, yep. Koala slash giraffe. Okay. For the challenge, yep. for the challenge factor. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Drag dragon slash unicorn. Um, yeah. which I really liked when it came up uh, on Tuesday. Um, and Pigeon Lion. Pigeon Lion. So it was Pigeon yes. Lion, Koala Giraffe, <clears throat> Dragon Unicorn. Yeah, I think it would be almost coward cowardly of me if I didn't try a Pigeon Lion. That seems really tricky. I've got no idea what to do with that. So, nice. <laughs> um, as a kind of uh, uh, sacrificial act, I will I will give this a go, and you can all watch me um, flail. Um, uh, okay, I'm, I'm going to just uh, add a little bit of color to this. So I'll just show you um, a, a way that I really quickly knock out color for something like this. So I've finished my line work up this, and I'd like to select all the pixels underneath to to color them in. Mm -hmm. So I can make a new layer underneath, and I could. Um, uh, um, just get a big brush and I could start coloring in a new color. So we could go a pinky color and I could color in underneath the line work like so, um, which would work just fine, but uh, we haven't got time for that kind of thing. So I'm gonna select all the pixels outside of my object using the magic wand tool, which you can find in your toolbar over here. And then I'm gonna invert that selection. So I could right click and say, select inverse or there's a, there's a shortcut for that. Then on my layer underneath, I'm gonna mask that layer. So I'm just gonna click the mask um, button down the, uh, at the bottom of the, the layers panel. And now I can click back on my layer and I can start um, uh, drawing and everything will draw nicely within the lines that I've got there. Um, so I'm not worrying nice. about the color. It's gonna be a pink elephant for now, that's fine. 
And I've got to keep using this brush because I like the texture that we've got going on here. So we're going to just sort of continue that on. So I've colored in all underneath my, um, what did you call it again? Elephetal? I called it Elephetal. I think there might be a better one in chat, which was Lady Fant. <laughs> that was uh, like shout out to Misty. Group. I quite I quite like that one. Um, uh, okay, so I'm gonna use my um, uh, I've pressed Command U to bring up my hue and saturation slider, and I'm just gonna move that around until I get a nice red that I like. Uh, so we've got a good red there. I'm gonna drop the saturation a little bit. I say yes, that's fine. Now that's come up a little bit too dark there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna fill in a little bit, bit of that. It's, it's a bit too patchy, I think. Mm. So I'm gonna use a nice big soft brush to just sort of fill in that um, a little bit um, and um, lose a little bit more of that patchiness. Um, and then I'm getting a texture that feels a little bit more consistent there, which I'm happy with. Oh, that's cool. So you put like, you, you added another layer below. Um, was it the same brush? I blinked and I missed. Are you still using the same brush and you just added another kind of layer of what you did there? Or was it a cleaner brush that you put underneath? Uh, no, it was a cleaner brush. It was just like yeah. a airbrushing, super soft brush to sort of fill in some of those those yeah. rough bits. Because um, that texture was, it was just a bit too full on. It was a bit distracting there. Yeah. Cool. Um, so I like the color of the uh, the wings there, um, uh, but uh, the rest of it should probably be sort of a dark gray or black. So I'm just going to get my lattice tool and I'm going to select all the bits that aren't the wings. Um, and again, I'm going to use Command U. And I'm going to drop the saturation way off on that and um, darken it just a little bit. Now I've got sort of that darker gray look. Now the blue line work looks okay, but it's not quite standing out as much as it did before. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change the blending mode of the layer. And that sort of changes how that layer interacts with the layers below it. Mm. So I'm gonna choose one called multiply there. And that's just gonna, um, it's gonna let the colors underneath sort of bleed through. And it just gives it a bit more of a consistent look. It almost looks uh, black there, so. Um, it's really great. It does it does so much. Just that, that multiply. We, we we're doing another stream, I think it was, and we were chatting about oh, what what what's the adjustment we're looking for. And I think I commented, it's it's multiply. It's always multiply. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the best. It's a good one. It's the best. Yeah, one. I used Photoshop for literally about four years before someone told me about multiply, and it was one of those things that just like changed my process completely. Yeah. But I just I just didn't know that one button. No one had told the one me. It was, um, yeah. Um, okay, so uh, I'm not going to spend too long on this. So I'm just going to go in now and sort of um, fix up um, some of the highlights. So I'll make the eyes a bit brighter. I'll put a bit of uh, whiteness into that um, section there and definitely make sure I get those highlights so that pops out a little bit. And what I might do is uh, um, definitely get a nice, uh, I'm going to say it's a French manicure on the nails here. Oh, lovely. Um, um, consistent with many elephants these days. Um, and then I'm going to use sort of a, a washed out kind of brush um, just to sort of add a few couple highlights to um, my elephant there. And it's I, I really like these kind of rough digital drawings because you don't have to get too lost in the details. You can kind of just really roughly knock things out um, and add a couple highlights. And because this has a look uh, of being something almost that would be done on paper, um, I don't want it to look it, it because of it's it's very hard to get uh, really intense levels of saturation um, when you're working in watercolors or pastels or something like that um, and sometimes things look too digital if they're, they're a bit too full on so I'm just going to drop the opacity of that um, that colored layer a little bit and now I feel like I've got something that sort of sits on the page a little bit more it's a bit softer mm, yeah um, that's a really good point yeah, so we could go on forever, but uh, I think I'm maybe going to leave that one uh, where it is now. So I'm going to be nice and neat and put everything in a folder. And what, what we called it, it was a, uh, a lady... Lady Fant or Ella Fiedel? Yeah, Lady Fant is good. Okay, cool. Lovely. Well, I'm, I'm quite happy with that one. How much time have we got? We've got, We've got about, about 20 minutes left. About 20 minutes left. I've got a question for you um, from Elizabeth. Hi, Elizabeth. Um, lovely to hey, see Elizabeth. you in chat again. Um, she asks, they ask, um, do you do a lot of commission slash freelance work or are you in-house? 
Uh, so I'm essentially a freelancer. Um, so I, I, I work for myself. Um, and I've got an agent uh, uh, that helped me find uh, most of my commercial work. Um, so not much of my work is personal commissions in terms of like individuals getting in contact with me. Most of it's uh, within sort of advertising or business or things like that. I do take on personal commissions every once in a while, but um, it's uh, um, I don't know, most of my time is caught up with, with other kinds of projects like that. Um, yeah, I hope that I hope that answers your questions. If you've got any more questions about sort of general freelance stuff, that's that's a it's a big topic. So definitely um, drop any questions you might have in there. It's great. It's a great um, question. I don't know how many like illustrators are like in house, like full time and stuff like that. I think it's a uh, not not super common. And most of the illustrators that you know, kind of we have on Adobe Live tend to be freelance or contract and work for like clients, you know, businesses, things like that. Yeah, there, there are definitely uh, um, a few. Um, out there. Um, there's some people I even know who work full time within sort of um, corporate um, corporate circles um, as, as full time illustrators. So it's, it's definitely a thing. Um, would that be like that storyboarding I, or something? I'm trying to think where they would fit in or is it like a creative agency where they're just doing and they have enough kind of illustration work that it gets applied enough over projects? Uh, I mean, the, the, the guys that I'm thinking of actually work at um, KPMG, so they're full-time oh, right. subscribers. They're, they're subscribers. Do full-time, yeah, I can um, see sort that. Of, uh, um, Business-related drawing stuff. Um, oh wow! Good guys. There you go. Okay, um, uh, I'm just quickly pulling up some reference here. Um, I'm just going to drop these ones into um, the Photoshop file out of expediency. So we're going to get a pigeon, and we've got a lion here as well. Um, so if you're just joining us, we're, um, we're mashing up animals here with Bill Hope. We're here for another 20 minutes. So if you've got any questions, throw them in. Um, we, we did a um, llama crab uh, on Tuesday um, and Bill has challenged himself to do two <laughs> in one stream today, um, which is very brave of him, just like a brave lion. Um, and so now <laughs> we're doing, uh, yeah, pigeon lion. Um, I yeah. would also like to open up chat to naming the pigeon lion. Let's see. Yeah. Let's, let's see what we can name a pigeon line. I'll, yeah, okay. I've, I've got, got some I've got suggestions. Absolutely nothing, <laughs> so hopefully some good ones come through. Um, cool. Okay. Okay. I got. I got to think for a second, guys. This is a. This is a trickier one. So I think I'm going to start with. Um, um, I. I love this sort of um, kind of archetypal pigeon um, uh, shape. Um, so we'll, we'll start with a really loose outline here. Um, and I think it'll be important to, I mean, we have to, it's got to have a mane. So it's going to have a big mane on it. Um, so I'll draw sort of like the big shape for the mane. Um, uh, but let's try and keep that pigeon shaped head. And one of the things I like about pigeons is that is their big eyes. And I don't know why, but a sort of um, a drawing pigeons with slightly misaligned um, eyes i think there's a there's a there's a chicken in the movie moana um the, the pixar oh, yeah. movie um that's got slightly the eyes aren't quite yeah, tracked and it of, gives them a, yeah. a wonderfully kind of goofy look and i think there's quite a lot of birds their eyes are actually like that and that's why you see them sort of turning so much it's like their pupils are fixed or something i don't right. know if they have the capability to move them so i think it makes total sense it's 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 um makes total sense if you're a pigeon but uh, not so much um uh, for humans. Okay, so let's let's zoom in on our, our lion reference here and let's try and work out. Um, so we've got to have a bit of that nose. Um, I'll block in sort of the, the, the overall shape. And um, something about lions, they've got this big, broad, kind of quite intense nose. So I'm going to make sure I get something like that in. I'm sort of, I'm kind of drawing the planes, almost like I was drawing the sides of a cube. I'm draw drawing these big planes of the face to kind of knock out Mm. what that shape is. Um, it's looking quite goofy already, uh, this line, which is good. Um, all right. And then they've got these funny little teddy bear kind of ears lions. Mm. Um, um, so we'll, we'll get that in there as well. All right, I'll just erase the bits they don't need. <laughs> the eyes are really cracking me up actually like it's very <laughs> subtle like it's not you know you have a couple of pixels to the to the left yeah and yeah it literally be... if i if i select that pixel and like yeah uh yeah makes sense but cartoon lion yeah. pigeon lion 
<laughs> Pigeon Lion. Yeah. Um, uh, so, um, I think it better have some kind of tail. Let's try and introduce a few more. Um, actually, you know what we could do is pigeons have a, 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 a funny kind of sort of seagull sort of flappy kind of walk. Um, so let's let's just zoom in on our pigeon for a second there. And the the legs kind of um, you can see on the on the reference we've got here. Lots of their the legs are kind of like hidden inside their, their fur or their feathers or something. Mm. So you kind of sort of allude to just a bigger mass underneath there, which is their legs. And then they've got those thin little legs there. But let's instead of giving them bird legs, let's give them some big paws um, at the bottom there. Um, and then another one coming out like this. Remember, I think um, pigeon. I always just think of the Simpsons, but um, you know, they they're doing a news thing about them, like a feathered rat or gutter bird. I always <laughs> like those. <laughs> um, we have some great names in chat. Um, Lid Lidian. <laughs> Lidian, okay, I think yeah. is good. Um, um, Pigeon as well. I think they both make sense. Yeah. Yeah. That's a tricky one. I They're love great. this. I love this stride. Um, I blinked on yeah, the chat the... and then I looked over and then yeah, I've got this kind of stride going on. Like he means it. Yeah, I think there's something humorous with sort of a slightly misaligned look, um, but a very confident stride. There's a bit yeah. of a contrast there, which I think is quite funny. Um, so uh, let's give him a slightly more upright kind of position there. Uh, we'll try and get that long neck going on. Uh, quick little shout out, Sophie Eleanor, get out of my head. I have also written down uh, King of the Concrete Jungle. Um, and that's what <laughs> she has written in chat as well. Um, Fantastic. We often think on the same lines. That is too funny. Great to see you here in chat. We've also, also got Plyon um, from Misty as well for a name. So these are great. Love it. Nice work, everyone. And please do put in any ideas. I think we'll have time to do a few more. So any any suggestions for additional um combinations oh wow um, time for another one that's you're brave man. uh yeah let me refine this one a little <laughs> bit more um but i think i think we've kind of done the the, the, the nuts and bolts of it um and let, let's just get that nice kind of shaggy lion tail coming out the back there i'll put a couple claws on his little feet maybe just shade a little bit underneath there again i'm going to make my nut brush nice and big and just put in some of that, that sort of broader shade using the side of my stylus. I can't tell you guys, I've been looking for a, uh, a, a, um, a pencil brush that nicely mimics the ability to use the side of the pencil for ages. And I just stumbled across this one on, for the stream on Tuesday. I'm so happy with it. <laughs> I'm actually using a new, uh, a new um, uh, Cintiq display as well. So possibly the new, the new pen is um, actually just doing a much better job at um, recognizing the side of the pen. Right. That may have something to do with it. Okay, let's um, enjoyably silly. Um, let's do another one. What's next? Let's do another one. Um, just for the sense of time, I'll, I'll grab one from... Um, so I'll give you two to choose from. I'm going to pitch Dragon Unicorn again, um, okay. but also Shark Dog. Uh, okay, they're both good. I, I'm, I'm getting a sense that uh, you, you might be interested in the dragon unicorn. So um, <laughs> let me let me see what I can do there. You sense correctly, shark, shark, shark Dog was a red herring. That's right. Uh, it is dragon <laughs> unicorn. I didn't want to tell you what to do. Just merely yeah, imply yeah. it loudly. Um, Fair enough. <laughs> okay, well, I, I, I'm, I'm relatively confident with your average... Um, uh, Dragon. I mean, I can kind of make up dragons as they go, but I've, my my Achilles he heel of animal drawing has always been the horse. Um, I think we've talked about this on the stream before. Um, I've been mocked regularly for my my inability to draw horses, so I'm just going to quickly find some reference for myself. While you do that, I'll um, check in with chat as well. Um, uh, Elizabeth says uh, earlier when it was just the eyes, I thought it was an evil Kermit. Yeah, Kermit does kind of have <laughs> things on the top, doesn't he? I think that's, that's one of the things that's inherently funny about Cookie Monster as well. I mean, he's yeah. got the jangly eyes, but they're, they're, they're a bit, bit off as well. Yeah, um, and um, Elizabeth asking, where can uh, they connect with you? Instagram or is Instagram your main social media handle? Yeah, so yeah, where definitely. Can um, you? If you just 
type me into type Bill Hope into Instagram, and you should find me. And um, yeah, definitely shoot me a message. Um, okay, I really got to think this one through. So I mean, uh, so you've got dragons. Let me just sort of rough out dragon, and then we've got unicorn. Sorry, I'm just thinking on the fly here, guys. Um, this is great. While you're doing that, I'll just reference like kind of um, what Bill's doing at the moment. You can correct me when I'm done. But um, we were actually talking a little bit about when doing the illustration, just drawing a really sh small version, like very quick to try to get the proportions right and things like that before you get stuck into the, um, the final versions, like quite a useful way to kind of get things started, like draw your own little thumbnail. Um, yeah, before yeah you kind of definitely. Go along. Um, so I think um, I'm kind of going to go something I'm thinking there's lots of, uh, I was doing, working on a job recently um, that involved a very, very cute unicorn. So I think I'm going to go for a mega cute um, little horse unicorn. Um, and we'll just uh, add some dragon elements as we go along. Um, all right. Hmm. It's always tricky trying to find the right. What's I thought for a second you were form? doing like a flame coming out of the, like where the unicorns thing would be. Like instead oh, of a fire good. breathing dragon, you've got the unicorn thing and you've got the fire like coming out where the um, unicorn pointy thing would be. Unicorn. Well, pointy? that's a very good idea, Flynn. Okay. Okay. Let's start again. Let's start again. <laughs> Flynn's coming in with, with all the, 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 the great ideas. So I think uh, having a sort of um, magical powered, um, horn that shoot flame, shoots flames is, is kind of the go. We're definitely here. going like Pokemon level here now, aren't we? I think I think someone yeah. said Pokemon and then now I'm just thinking, what if it shot a flame out of its head? Um, <laughs> we've got some names in early. Yes, you're um, jumping in early before we even suggested it, which is very clever. Um, so naming, feel free to throw in your suggested names um, for our unicorn dragon. We have um, Unigon. Uh, from Sophie. Now nice. that's full on Pokemon, right? Like Unigon. Yeah. I choose you. <laughs> um, and Dragcorn, um, which I quite like Dragcorn um, as well. <laughs> okay. So um, I've got it sort of in flame shooting position. Now I'm going to keep it a very stubby, cute little unicorn. So um, let's give it some little legs coming out. Um, it's always a, a um, do you know the cartoonist Gary Larson, Flynn? Yes, absolutely. Famous yeah. American cartoonist. Yeah, we had a few books of his when I was growing up. And I always remember this one comic and it was like a, it was a old time, it was like an old folks home. So it was like the old house with the rocking chairs on the veranda. And it was an old folks home for cartoonists. And there's one old guy talking to another old guy and he's saying, I once drew a nose that was this big. And <laughs> it always makes me think of like, you can always go, whenever you think you've drawn something like cartoonified or simplified with the leg stubby, you can always go further. There's like extreme levels of, mm. of uh, sort of cartoonishness that you can get to. Um, and uh, I often forget to, to push it that bit further. So he's <laughs> gonna have a dragon's tail on this one. Um, and we better give it some wings, but let's keep them really little wings to make it extra cute. Um, but we'll keep them sort of dragon-esque. Uh, and maybe we'll point some of those um, oh, yeah. to, 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 to make them slightly more dragonish as well. Nice. This is a great thing about these streams. Never would have drawn this in my life, but uh, <laughs> given the opportunity, I'm very happy to be in this place. It's um, the magic, magic this. of doing stuff live and hanging out. Uh, creative chat as well um yeah we've yeah. gone down Always we've, have a good chat. we've gone down the um like the route of you know when people like just name name like their dogs or cats or pets like you know steve or something like that we've, we've yeah. gone down <laughs> that that thread of thinking we've got barry barry kevin and susan has <laughs> been thrown in <laughs> as suggestions um yeah okay great. i'm gonna get a, a few big Force lines coming out of this one, and um, yeah, let's get some some flames happening. Any Pokemon fans out there? I'm seeing Dragonite in uh, in a lot of this. I'm a nerd. Um, <laughs> so cool. 
Um, all right, and again, we're going with the mega, mega big pupils to keep it extra cute. Mm. Put a couple big uh, highlights in there. And have some big old nostrils at the top. And trying to keep, uh, kind of trying to keep all of my dimensions incredibly sort of stubby um, uh, uh, to get that sort of um, cute, tiny little baby unicorn vibe. But, you know, cute and tiny, but a sea of rage underneath. Um, <laughs> yeah. I the determination getting... is like coming through the screen. Great. Like, great. Yeah. Okay. It's great. So cool. I'm happy with that one. It's very cute. Awesome. Okay. Um, we got time for one more. Or are we almost almost done here. We've today? got four minutes left. It's up to you. What do you think? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll do. A, I'll do just a really speedy one. Okay. Um, was it just the dog shark left? Dog shark. Let's do it. Dog shark. Okay. Okay. Dog shark. <laughs> um, okay. So I'll, I'll just kind of again try and think about. Um, what is my uh, shark drawing ability? I really struggle with sharks as well. There's something I, about their, their um, form I have not quite worked out. Maybe we'll just put a big dog nose on a shark. Um, and we'll give it that central bit. This is making th me think of my little puppy. I've got a dog called Akon, everybody, who's insane. Um, and uh, is, a, is a challenging little puppy to be around. He's very, very cute, but it hides a inherent terror um, inside. What, in what way? Just uh, wants a lot of he, attention or? He, he wants a lot of attention. And I think he just like wants to bite the world by the face and, and wrestle it to the ground every mm -hmm. day. And I think me and my partner are, are, are sort of relatively low-key people and we, we we just struggle to meet his his demands on of energy every day he right. just like if he's not tearing something apart or, or wrestling someone it is time time wasted um he's he's, he's gonna mellow as he gets older but yeah he's, he's very intense yeah. yeah a lot of dogs are like that when they're when they're little right yeah he's being pretty good right now though no, no barking in the background so that's good um all right so we've got a cute puppy shark um wow that was quick i'm like we've got four minutes we don't have time it's been two <laughs> this is really all cool. right well um i might i might leave it there let's just quickly cycle through where we got up to so we've yep. got dog shark here we've got um uh unicorn dragon mm -hmm. um we've got <laughs> lion pigeon which i'm quite happy with yeah the um, lion pigeon yeah it takes a cake yeah that's great uh, I, d I didn't know how it was going to turn out but but there it is and then we started off with our, our lady beetle elephant um that's been really fun thank yeah. you everyone for joining in it was a, it was a good time um, thank i hope i was able to impart some sketching photoshop things there's more there's more tips and tricks perhaps in the first stream so if you really want a couple pointers um, that's, true. that's a good one to check out as well. Yeah, that's true. Check that out. Um, it's been a great time. There was a question that I missed um, as we're wrapping up. Do you have any new books out? Because um, I'm a collector uh, of your books, but yeah, shout it out. Thank you very much. Um, mm. I do have one coming out at Christmas. Uh, it's a it's a special edition though. So it's got it's got a couple of new pages and characters, um, but I am working on a brand new, everything new book that's coming out uh, next Easter, which will be an Easter book. And I'm currently working on it right now, and it's it's probably the weirdest one that I've done so far, and thus I'm very very happy with it so far. It's it's going to be a strange one. It's well, good. I hope I hope the pig lion makes a makes an appearance in the new book. Um, it's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> throw it in. Thanks, chat. You guys have been amazing. Um, it's been great on Tuesday and Thursday. Thank you so much for joining us here on Adobe Live. We'll be back next week. Um, we'll actually be joined by the fantastic Kitya Palaskas, uh, craft-based designer from Melbourne. Um, she's incredible. She's lots of fun. We've been meaning to get her on for a long time. It's going to be great. If you enjoyed this stream, you'll enjoy that stream. Uh, we're going to have a great time with that. Um, thank you, everyone. And thank you, Bill. It's always so much fun hanging out with you on Adobe Live. That was Live. awesome. Thanks so much, Flynn. Have a good day, guys. See you, everyone.